The Susan Brenda Show is a radio show online broadcasted on YouTube across the United States and globally. The show features guests who speak about health, spirituality, entertainment, and a host of subjects to enlighten people across the nation. Listen to the show that empowers women and men alike and highlights those who have made a difference. I'm Susan Brenda, and this is The Susan Brenda Show. You know, today... During this time of uneasiness with the coronavirus affecting everyone, especially people with immune deficiencies, physical therapy is very necessary. Not only does it have an effect on one's physical ability, but also on their mental well-being. My guest today is an old friend of the Susan Brender Show, Scott Miller, and his practice has a mission, and the mission is to put the personal touch back into PT. His outstanding team offers an unparalleled diversity of services to accommodate every kind of patient. And fortunately for us, he has taken the time to be with us. And I want to welcome Scott Miller to the Susan Brenda Show. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sue, for having me on the show. I always enjoy being being a guest of your show, and uh, I hope I am uh, able to share some good information today. I know you have. You know, I'm going to hit you with a a real banger right now, and I call it that because it is uh, a little controversial. But, you know, let's just sort of go on the track of answering these questions. You know, I want to know, I mean, we're dealing with a very critical and chaotic time. Is it necessary or could or could a physical therapy, could you put it on hold during the pandemic? Uh, Well, certainly that that is a great question, and uh, there, there are Certain patients that uh, that no doubt can can put uh, you know a physical therapy where they would normally go to uh, to receive physical therapy can can put it on hold for you know for, you know maybe until they feel a little more comfortable coming into the office or when you know when the, this pandemic is over. However, for others, that's not always the the, the possibility or or the case uh, you know with their specific injuries. So you know we uh, you know we're trying to. You know, see patients who are you know in, in in most need of physical therapy and and cannot hold off with uh, with waiting for for treatment. Yeah, that brings me to, then to the question about the impact of the coronavirus with PT. Has it really been you know something that's been helping your business or destroying your business? Well, just like most small businesses at the beginning, you know, most businesses were shut down and, you know, that was for the greater good of, you know, of mankind and just to, to try to help mitigate uh, the spread of coronavirus. So everybody was in it together and everyone really needed to shut down or, or really decrease the services they were offering to really help try to, um, you know, put this virus at bay. Um, but as things have been opening, and things are starting to, you know, get back to any type of normalcy. You know, we've seen an increase, uh, an increase in, in our patient, uh, in our patient visits. But it certainly has um, been a, has had a major impact in all of healthcare. Um, and just yeah. the fact that people are just not doing what they normally have done in the past, and people aren't as as active, or they're not doing as many activities as they have in the past uh, so that therefore they may not have to have aches and pains or getting injured and, and in need of the physical therapy or or they're not going in for that elective surgery that they planned on having maybe during this uh, during this time yeah you know i want to know is in-person pt safe and how do you do that um, well, in-person PT is uh, is certainly as, as safe as 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 you can make it. Um, you know, every every single uh, healthcare office uh, is dealing with this differently and doing different things to help to help keep their patients safe. And we've um, we've done a lot of different things at our office and changed a, a lot of a lot of different things to to help keep our patients safe, to, to keep help to keep our therapists safe. Um, because if our therapists are not safe, then there's you know treatment can't be administered. Uh, sure. So, you know, for, for one, we, we, you know, we do mandate and it, it, it is re- recently mandated in our county here in, uh, in Florida to, uh, to, to wear masks. So that, that is one thing that has um, been one of our um, safeguards from the beginning. And we've, uh, we've required patients and therapists to wear masks from the very, very start. And that, uh, I believe, has is, is helped keep us, keep us safe uh, to, to a degree. 
Um, we've also yeah. installed, um, I've installed barriers between every single treatment table as to keep, uh, to keep uh, you know, so that the patients are not um, on top of each other. And there's, you know, only one patient at, at each station at one time. So, you know, that also helps, um, you know, uh, prevent, you know, any gathering of, of patients in any one part of the physical therapy office. We've uh, undergo extensive cleaning uh, techniques that, uh, you know, go above and beyond what we've done in the past and more frequently than what we've done in the past. And we've installed uh, cleaning stations and hand sanitizing stations throughout the whole office to keep, uh, you know, the, the patients uh, clean and also safe. And then um, one last thing that we've, that we've done also is that we've scheduled patients on every other appointment time. And we've uh, helped spread out the uh, availability of our appointments and the uh, the therapist schedule as to limit how many people we have in the office at any given time. Yeah. You know, I'm interested in knowing also how it's affected one's uh, mind. You know, there's so much stress and so many issues that people are having now because of the coronavirus. And I'm sure that when you have a lot of stress, it also affects your body. With that in mind, I'm interested in knowing when people come into your office and they're nervous and they're telling you that, you know, they're feeling pain here and they're feeling pain there. Is this something that you can deal with? Because needless to say, your mind, it's like everything in the body, you know, the, the old song, this is connected to this, this is connected to that. So when people come in and they say, I am just like, I, I can't even tell you how much pain I'm having. And, and you realize that it's not physical necessarily. It's coming from their, from their head because they're so stressed out. Do you deal with that? And how do you deal with that? We deal with that quite uh, quite often with uh, with several patients, and that's not just during the coronavirus. That has to do, you know, just with everyday life and everyday stresses. And you know, uh, part of some of our prerequisite classes to be a PT is uh, some psychology classes and and how to deal with uh, the stresses of life and how to deal with people who do have stresses and if uh, how to um, how to really um, you know, note that and how to detect that um, with a patient, and if if you know certainly if it needs to be referred to uh, to a further specialist, we're we're there uh, with a trained eye to see that, but we're also there to talk with patients and to calm them down and to let them know that we're here for them for whatever injuries that they do have, and in a lot of cases, just by patients talking to us about what's going on and and even just talking to us about some of the stresses that they have. It um, it can certainly help with with the the pain. A lot of pain does uh, come from a psychosomatic nature. Yeah. So, what kinds of PT can be done virtually? I mean, we're living in a time where a lot of things are done virtually. Can you do that with physical therapy? We can certainly do uh, do some physical therapy um, uh, visits and consultations uh, via the telehealth platform. And we have, um, uh, during this coronavirus, I have seen several patients on, online through our, through our telehealth platform. Uh, for those patients who don't feel, um, uh, feel safe coming into an office or just don't want to, don't want to leave their house or, or some of our patients who are out of town that, that, uh, have been able to, uh, to, to utilize our services the best we can via the telehealth platform. And, you know, granted, it's, it's not, you know, you can't do your traditional physical therapy with modalities like electrical stim and heat and ice. And, and our main skill is, is our hands-on work and the manual therapy that we perform. However, you know, if we can just get someone on, um, on the video and, and talk to them about their specific, uh, their specific injury that they're, um, that they're dealing with, we can kind of talk them through exactly what's going on, maybe help diagnose what's happening based on just a few movements that we have them do and give them um, some good exercises and movements to keep them active and to keep them stronger and to hopefully help with whatever they're dealing with. And we have a, a very nice and very extensive exercise library that we can send a, a patient a nice exercise program. And usually a follow-up visit will include 
you know, going over a lot of those exercises that we sent them and kind of updating and giving us a nice little follow-up of where, you know, what's been going on since we last saw them online. Well, that's interesting. You know, how can one adapt uh, their PT routine at home? Is there a way that you suggest that they can do some exercises at home? Or, I mean, what do you say to them as far as, you know, home being as effective as in-person visits? Well, it it all depends on someone's um, uh, motivation and their their diligence and, and the ability to be able to do these exercises and movements correctly. And that is a good good reason why we do uh, you know some of the telehealth visits is so that we can make sure that we see them doing these movements properly. And pretty much, I'd say eighty percent of the exercises and movements that we do here in the office, um, we can instruct patients on how to do these at home. And, you know, there's, um, you know, everything can be modified. Um, so if a machine is being used here in the office, we can modify it and we can use bands or light weights or stuff around the house that can help replicate the movement or exercise that they're doing here in the office. So, you know, they, there really is a lot of different things that a patient can do in the comfort of their own home. Yeah, because of the coronavirus, um, sports have not really taken place yet, although they started baseball, as far as I know, and perhaps there are other um, uh, sports that they're doing. But athletes, do you start seeing more athletes coming in, even though they haven't played? Because when they're just sedentary, um, there's got to be something that goes on. And if they came into your office, where would you begin well, it uh, it all depends on what uh, you know. There are a lot of different factors: their their age, their you know their level of sport, what sport they're playing, how long they've been sedentary for, um, what they you know what they do they injure themselves getting back to the uh, back to the sport. So there's a lot of different factors. You know, you always start with you know just a full consultation and a, and, a, and a history of, of exactly what's going on. Most likely, these professional athletes that are getting back to sport now. They've been um, doing 100% of their training, um, whether it was by themselves or maybe with one other person during this whole coronavirus. Now, we certainly have been seeing more and more of your, you know, weekend warrior type patient that has, was very sedentary during this whole coronavirus. And now all of a sudden, things are starting to open up. Now they can go play tennis and they're playing three, four days a week where they were playing no days a week. So at that point, mm -hmm. we have to just try to calm, you know, calm them down a little bit, try to get them through to, you know, limit how much they're getting back into it so quickly and try to hold off with, you know, anything that, that, that causes any increased pain. Yeah. You know, I always like to give my guests, and you know this, uh, the last word, because there's something that you want to tell the patients about physical therapy, because I think it is a very important one. And to be honest with the, the audience, I'm involved with it, with, P, uh, with Miller PT, and I'm finding that it's helping a great deal. So what do you want to tell the people at the end of the show that they need to think about? Well, with, uh, you know, physical therapy is not just for someone who has a specific injury. It's really just about getting, getting someone, um, uh, you know, uh, to be more active, to be more mobile. Um, it, uh, you know, it, it's more in, to prevent injuries in the future and to prevent falls and to prevent your degenerative diseases. Um, and that's where physical therapy can really be beneficial and really be helpful is um, is to really prevent future issues. And, you know, it's a, you know, one may not need to go through a full physical therapy program, but just, you know, get doing the right movements and the right exercises to be able to prevent, uh, prevent injuries and to prevent any sports related injuries or, or arthritic type of uh, um, uh, issues um, or any other types of um, um, aches or pains. Yeah. Last question, actually. I want to know who you treat. Do you treat kids and do you treat um, elderly people as well? So it's like a, um, a scope, if you will, of all kinds of people. Um, who comes to your office? Well, I've had my practice for just, uh, just over 14 years now, and I have seen patients anywhere in the, in the range of eight-year-olds. Eight year 
all the way to I think my oldest patient was 105 years old. So, you know, we we really treat the whole age spectrum. Uh, we do mostly orthopedic type of issues. Um, you know, work with uh, you know, strengthening mobility, um, a lot of um, muscular and, and uh, uh, skeletal issues, and anywhere from you know, like I said, eight years old all the way up to to you know wow. over 100 year old That's patients. That's amazing. Well, thank you, Scott. Um, will you give the uh, audience a last understanding of um, how they get in touch with you? I know you have a great website, and you give them all kinds of information and education. So wh- how did they get in touch with you on your website? Sure. The, the, the website is by far the best way to, uh, to, to see who we are, access, uh, you know, contact us, and, and, and get a plethora of information. We have hundreds and hundreds of articles on pretty much every single injury or any issue going on with the human body. And the, the web address is www.miller, M-I-L-L-E-R dash PT.com. So that's www.miller dash PT.com. And you can find out all information about, you know, what we're doing during this whole coronavirus about the telehealth and, uh, you know, about, you know, uh, we do treat patients in their homes as well for patients who, you know, don't feel comfortable leaving their home and maybe a little more comfortable with maybe just one therapist coming to their home for, for the treatment. And with those treatments at home, we're able to do pretty much everything that we do here at the office in, in the comfort of someone's home. Well, my guest today has been Scott Miller, whose mission is to put the personal touch back into PT. And he's an amazing, if you will, an amazing physical therapist who really treats the community and deals with a lot of different uh, illnesses uh, from A to Z. And I want my audience to really think about if they live in Florida and especially in South Florida, that they go to to him for a treatment because it's you're not going to find any place that's any better than that. And I want to thank you again. Thank you very much, Sue. I always appreciate uh, being a guest on your show.